Uh, welcome to Let's Paint Live. I am John Bogle from Plaid, and I am super excited to invite you to the April edition of our monthly program, Let's Paint Live, where we teach you to paint a beautiful painting in just about an hour. So um, for those of you who have joined us regularly, you might notice that we kind of have a different uh, venue here tonight, and that's because we are at Project Studio with Jill Alford. And uh, Jill is the artist behind this beautiful painting, and she's going to, uh, she's going to be our teacher tonight. Um, before we jump into the painting, though, tell us a little bit about Project Studio. What do you do here? I would love to tell you about Project Studio. Um, we are a DIY uh, art studio. We do a little bit of everything. So we started out kind of um, on the sign trend and learning how to hand letter and that kind of thing. And we kind of run from there. Um, the space that you're in tonight is our new classroom space. And, and here we're teaching painting, uh, hand lettering, we've got candle pouring, we've got all kinds of um, really fun things that we do at Project Studios. So. And let me show you these. Project Studio actually has a line of stencils with us. Um, they're folk art stencils. You can get them at platonline.com. You can also get them at Michael's. Yes. And they've got uh, beautiful designs. So check those out. Um, so before we jump into the painting itself, uh, for those of you who um, have done this before with us, you know that you can paint along live. If you've already got your supplies, that's great. We're going to just start here in just a minute. And like I said, it'll take just maybe about an hour to, to, to paint this painting. If you don't have your stuff yet, however, there is a link in the, uh, in the description below where you can go get all the supplies you want, you need. Go to platonline.com to get them and then come back and watch the live stream later on your own time. These live streams live forever on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. Okay, All so right. here we go. Now, Hello Spring is the name of the painting. And yes. one of the fun things about this painting is it doesn't just use a brush, right? What, what are we gonna do here? It doesn't just use a brush. Um, we call it a little bit abstract and we're gonna use several things. We're gonna use a brush, we're gonna use a palette knife, and we're gonna use the best tools and that's our fingers, little finger painting. So, um, gonna be super fun super um, creative and not too difficult. So I think you'll enjoy it. All right, let's, yeah. get, let's get started. All right, here we go. So everyone has a uh, wood panel board in front of them. And uh, we're painting on a wood panel today because I kind of like the texture that it gives us. And it lets us do a little bit of extra when we get uh, done with a little bit of sanding block here. So. Um, we're not going to paint the sides right now because I want everyone to get finished with their painting and then you'll decide what color you want your sides to go. But right now we're going to start with just the base coat and everyone should have the um, Thunder Gray. And you have um, palette paper in front of you. So just squirt out a little dab on your palette paper. And if you're at home with us, I like to have a blow dryer with me when I do this, but we're not going to do that tonight, ladies. We're going to um, just um, let it air dry. So we're going to take our um, flat base cutting brush, and we're just going to do just little X's, and we're going to smear the paint all over the canvas and kind of create some texture. You don't want to go back and forth. You don't necessarily want to see uh, uniform strokes. We want to go back and forth. It's okay. This painting is extremely layered, so it's okay if um, you see a little bit of the board still. We just want to get some texture on there. Don't do it so thick that it's not going to dry at all, but we want to get it covered. Um, we're going to sand it at the end, so if you have any weird... Um, uh, if the wood's doing something funny or... Um, you get a, some sawdust or something in it, we're gonna sand it and it gives it a neat texture. So back and forth, just in X's, little dabs, nothing too thick. And get it good and covered. You're covering the board, yes. Yeah, cover it. You don't have to. Um, you don't have to cover it uh, completely, but you do want to get a good amount of um, paint on it. All right. And if you need more paint, go for it. You don't have 
to paint the sides right now. I like to wait till we get to the end because uh, especially on wood, I like to paint it a different color to kind of ground the canvas. The great thing about painting on a um, wood panel is you don't have to frame it. You can take it right home and hang it up. So when you get done and you kind of see how you feel, you might want to paint it green. You might want to paint it brown. <laughs> Just depends on what you want. So I like to wait and see what the, what the painting is calling for. Does that make sense? All right. So that is kind of, that's good right there. And we're gonna let it just dry just a tad. And then um, we're gonna put our, uh, our brush in some water. I don't know that we're gonna need our, uh, our brush much more. The rest of the painting is gonna be done with the palette knife and our fingers. So, everybody good and covered? <laughs> our next color that we're gonna go into is the, um, the Castaway Blue, it's the uh, such a pretty color. Um, we love to use folk art paints here in the studio. It's just a great acrylic that gives really super good coverage. And um, I think y'all will enjoy them too. So sometimes when we're using some brighter colors and if we want to subdue them a little bit, I'll use a little bit of um, raw ember and that will kind of, <laughs> that will kind of, um, uh, mellow the color a little bit and make it a little bit more natural and not so bright. If you want a brighter, cheerier painting, you don't have to use the raw umber in it, but I like to mix a little bit of that in with it. So I'm going to put a little bit of dab, a little dab next to about a dime size next to the castaway blue. Then I'm going to take my palette knife and the palette knife is a really fun way to um, paint if you've never tried it before. Yeah. It's super forgiving and um, it lets you get some neat texture and a really um, great technique. So I'm gonna take my palette knife and I'm gonna mix a little bit of the umber in with the castaway blue and just smearing it on my palette paper. And then I'm gonna dab a little bit of it off and this is what the back of my palette knife is gonna look like right here. So just a little bit on the back. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my palette knife and I'm gonna have pressure right here on the neck of it and I'm gonna lay it down and I'm just gonna pull ever so slightly to give a little bit of texture. You want it to be, um, you wanna see the texture. You don't want super thick, opaque lines. You wanna see the texture. Okay. So error on the side of less paint to begin with and then if you need to add more, you'll get the feel for it. Okay, so if I come down on one side, I'm gonna go across the opposite direction. And I'm not gonna do tons of this on here because I want the background to peek out a little bit, but I also want to be able to layer more colors on, okay? So if I'm coming down on this side, I'm gonna come over here a little bit. And whatever I do on one side, I wanna make sure it's balanced on the other. So I might pull a little bit through on the bottom. Just wanna check in with everybody and see how they're doing. Uh, yeah, all right, we've got a great group here um, in the studio painting along with us. We've got folks from Iowa, North Carolina, Massachusetts, yes. Alabama, Dallas, Georgia. <laughs> That's right. We've got folks from all over the country chiming in. Glad to have everybody, it's awesome. Yes, and a couple of people are asking um, if, the, if the video is available to watch later, and absolutely it is. So just come back to our Facebook page and under the videos link, you will see all of our Let's Paint Lives. You can also see them on Plaid Crafts YouTube channel. And again, for those of you who are just joining the live stream, this is a monthly program that we do. It's called Let's Paint Live. And we teach you how to paint a complete painting in just about an hour. Yay. Tonight we're working on Hello Spring. All right, and we're, we've started our first um our first round with the uh, Castaway Blue. And then I want everyone to pick a contrasting color. We're going to use all of these colors in front of us. Um, I'm gonna go with a little bit of the teal, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, I'm gonna layer it on there, and I'm gonna still put a little bit of umber in with the teal. I'm not gonna go over the, um, the castaway blue, I'm gonna go beside it. I wanna just do a tiny bit of that to create just another layer and um, create some depth in the painting, okay? So we're gonna put a little bit of that green in there. Um, 
I love teals and blues. I don't know, I'm just drawn to them anyway, and especially this side time of year. But So we're gonna put a little bit of that in there. And if you're not, if you're having a hard time getting it to lay down with your palette knife, it's okay, just dip a little more. All right, so you don't have to go hog wild with it, but definitely get some contrast in there. All right, I don't typically um, put a lot of water in my palette knife when I'm painting y'all. I go ahead and I just kind of rub it off on the palette paper or on the, on the uh, brown paper, but having a, a dirty palette knife adds for some more texture and some more interest in the painting. So don't be, uh, uh, alarmed if you have green where you didn't want it or whatever especially in this kind of painting it, it you can just do anything you want and it's gonna look great so all right everyone got that you're layering that up there I like it, it looks really good <laughs> yeah it's just a rule follower over there it's awesome all right Everybody got that done? Okay. All right, so our next thing we're gonna do is we need to create the um, table or whatever surface our vase is gonna be sitting on. So I want you to look at your palette, I mean your panel, and kind of measure up about three inches uh, just to your eye. And we're gonna go back into the um, Thunder Gray. And I'm gonna take a little, bit of the umber and mix it in with it to kind of just get a deeper get a deeper color now a little bit of raw umber in with the thunder gray so now what we're gonna do I'm gonna turn my um, I'm not cleaning. I'm not gonna clean my palette knife at any time. So I'm making a deeper gray color. I'm taking the thunder gray and I'm putting a little bit of the umber in it. Then I'm gonna measure about three, three inches up or maybe just the width of the palette knife. I'm gonna take the palette knife, everyone watch, and I'm gonna lay it down on the side and I'm just gonna pull across several times just so that we get that horizontal motion so it looks like there's a surface that our vase is gonna be sitting on because we do not want it to look like it's just floating in midair, right? So you can t put a little bit more ember in there and I'm just really taking it. You can apply pressure, this knife is super flexible, so you can apply pressure with your, with your finger just like that. And, um, am I on it? Oh, okay. So then I'm just going to pull. And it's okay if you still see some of the blue underneath it. It's going to just add some, um, some texture and some interest. So really, that's about all you want. You don't want to go crazy with it. We're going to go back at the end, and we can fluff what I like to call fluff. And um, that. So when we get done with that... We're gonna sit here for half a second, and let it dry. Is everybody's paint super thick? Or <laughs> everyone's doing good? Awesome. Everyone got have that that horizontal stroke. Good. We're doing the whole board all the way down. But yes, just three just three inches from the bottom. We're making it look like a um, a table. Got it? Okay. Perfect. The great thing about this painting too is these are just the colors I chose, but really um, if you, uh, you can't go wrong with doing bright and sunny colors or this, this technique works with anything for sure. Okay, we're going to go back into a little bit of umber again when we get done. We're going to use that in a minute to make our to make our base. Y'all, these look good. They look awesome. 
<laughs> your table, your t I guess your table could stop halfway, but really for, for all. Okay, when you get done with your table, I want you guys to think about where your vase is gonna sit on this. I like, um, on the painting, I centered it off to the side. We're gonna do that, um, we're gonna do that here. We're gonna do a round vase, and um, we're gonna start, and we're gonna use our um, palette knife again, okay? So now, we've used the back side of the palette knife. We're gonna use the tip of the palette knife now. We're gonna take it, and we're gonna dip it in the umber. This is not exact. Do not worry about it if your vase is a little um, lopsided or special, as we like to say. It's okay. Can we just maybe see the picture? Um, they, want us, they want to see the painting. I don't know where it is, but we're going to go like this. All right. So, when you're thinking, when you're looking at your panel board and you're deciding where to put your vase, do not let your vase go past the halfway point. I would kind of make it right below halfway, maybe in the bottom third, a little bit more than a third, and you're going to just make a circular vase. And I'm just taking the tip of the palette knife and I'm basically just scratching the surface with it and I'm making the shape of the vase, okay? The bottom of the vase needs to be a tiny bit rounded. And that's all, that is all we're doing. It's gonna be very um, light. It shouldn't be super thick. That's perfect. Your, yeah, your table's just, your table's just, deep. If, you, if your table's a little bit bigger, that's okay. No problem, no problem. So we're gonna just scratch the outline of that vase right on here, okay? And really, if you do it and you think, oh, I'd like, I'd like to uh, maybe make it a little bit bigger, you can do that. I tend to, when I'm doing a painting, I don't know, I'm a fool for sentiment, so I tend to write on my paintings a lot. Uh, that's why I like to make them um, uh, off to one side or the other, because it gives me room to write something. On this particular painting, I think I wrote Be Still, but you could just write anything or you could stencil anything. It's just really kind of a fun way to add a little bit of um, personality to your painting. So after you scratch it on there, they got that? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm really not gonna clean it, I said that. Um, you don't have to uh, have it, you just have to have an idea of what, this, what your base is gonna look like. All right. So we're gonna go back in the Castaway Blue. I know it seems like we've been using the same colors, but I promise we're gonna get to all of them. I'm gonna go back in the Castaway Blue, and I'm gonna use the same amount of pressure and the same technique as I did with when I did the table and the horizontal, but this time I wanna kind of make sure that I'm curving my brush a little bit. I mean, not, not my brush, my palette knife a little bit, because we wanna give the um, vase we want it to look like it's rounded and not flat, right? It could be lopsided because it could be pottery that you made here at Project. <laughs> Shameless plugs, right? Shameless plugs. Um, so we're gonna go from side to side. Does not have to be completely opaque. In fact, I like it when it's not. Um, and we're gonna do some some more highlights to it, and I like it when. Okay, I like it when I get a little bit of um, the umber in it, and it kind of creates the shadowing effect for you from side to side. So again, side to side. All right. Beautiful, Victoria. I like that. <laughs> Good job. All right. How's everybody doing here in the room? You want to just, uh, let's just. I am having so much fun. All right. <laughs> let's just do a little quick tour around and see how everyone's doing. 
That lady in the green shirt down there, she follows good directions. <laughs> They do look good. And while everyone's working on that, I do want to tell the folks about one more thing. And that is, um, if you're having fun with this, I want to tell you about Plaid's Let's Paint program. So Let's Paint Live is our monthly live streams that we do, but it's part of a bigger program. And if you go to plaidonline.com slash let's paint, you can find out all about our education program where we are teaching people to paint. We've got different uh, programs there. We have um, a 12 flowers um, of the month with Donna Dewberry where you can buy an amazing kit that has everything that you need to paint a flower painting each month, the flower of the month with Donna personally. We also have a whole Let's Paint education program taught by Andy Jones. And the same thing, we have a kit there that will give you all the supplies that you need to paint a year's worth of amazing paintings. So it's all free uh, content that you can uh, watch on YouTube and then paint along with us. Full length studio lessons, just like we're doing here, except sort of in a pre-recorded format. So if you're enjoying yourself, please go to plotonline.com slash let's paint and check out all the offerings that we have because this is just one of them and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. All right, let's check back in. How all right, doing? I think everyone's doing great. They've all um, modeled their vases. I think they look great. Uh, we're gonna go to flower making now. Kind of, we're gonna arrange some flowers in here. Um, one of the important things about this painting is uh, because it's layered, we wanna make sure that um, we create depth underneath the painting. So we're gonna start with some of the um, clover green, and you're gonna, I'm, I am gonna use raw umber a ton. So I'm not cleaning my palette knife, but I'm taking the clover green, I'm taking a little bit of the raw umber again, and I'm gonna mix a dark, almost olive, um, kind of military dark green. This is gonna be the shadow. Um, behind our flowers because if we don't have something to ground it then it's just gonna um, look flat so what we're gonna do in this this part I like to say sometimes when we're teaching here in the studio one of the things that I have to do all the time is encourage people um, and let them know that while their painting might look like a hot mess it's gonna be uh, exquisite when we get through with it so this is one of those moments where you're thinking what in the world is she telling me but trust me your painting is gonna look great so we're gonna mix mix an olive green I'm gonna come in with the side of the palette knife again and just lay down almost like uh, you know just as if it were a chia pet or something, just putting, some, putting that green under there. Do not um, take it too far out. The, uh, the fun part about this palette knife is that when you press it and as the paint starts to run out, it will do the texture on its own. So see, as I push, it, it's starting to create texture. That's what you want. You don't want to have severe, severe, severe harsh lines. So see as it's, as it's coming out and it's creating texture, that is what I want you to do. And remember as we're doing this, um, this painting is meant to not be perfect. It's meant to let the palette knife and the tools do the work for you. So we're not creating uh, perfectly round flowers. We're, not, we're letting the palette knife do a lot of the work for us. So if you have something that looks very similar to what I've done here, you're good. Um, I would say that you are taking up the other uh, third of the canvas. There should be about, you're about three inches from the top. So you wanna definitely make sure that we have rain to grow our flowers out of this, but you don't wanna take up your whole panel with that, okay? And are these the leaves? These are the leaves behind, and it's also the shadow that obviously when you bunch a bunch of flowers together, they'll, 
it'll create shadow. So I'm gonna keep spreading it, and that's gonna help in our drying process. If you're at home following along, you might decide um, that you wanna use a blow dryer. We like to do that to speed along the process, but I think we're good here. Yeah, so, a couple of folks were asking to see the completed painting again, just for reference. Okay. So, so yeah, so you can see here, this is where the shadowing is gonna come in because when you arrange flowers, they're not all so tight and um, up on each other. We wanna make sure that if there's a gap, that there's color there, okay, that it makes sense. All right. So we're gonna let that dry just a tad. We've got a few people to say hello to out there too. Okay, well, who are we gonna say hi to? Absolutely, <laughs> let me just see here. We've got folks joining us from Pennsylvania. Love Pennsylvania. <laughs> Just writing this down, we got so many people here. We got MK, Alba. Um, where, where is my list? I can't even tell you how many people here. Um, we got people. We got Priscilla joining us. Um, Connie, hey Connie, Hi. good to see Hi, you. Connie. <laughs> Hi Connie. Hi Connie. So fun. Betsy. Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Betsy. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. All right, so here we go. All right, here's what I can tell you about these flowers, and I want you guys to pay attention. And pay attention if you're at home, too. I want you to hear this. We're going to do larger blooms. Everyone's tendency is to want to do small blooms and fill this canvas up with them. We're not going to do that. The larger blooms you make, the more interesting the painting is going to be. We're gonna start with, we're gonna probably do about six to eight good size blooms. I would say probably about the size of um, a small orange or something, you know, just as a good size bloom. And then we'll do a few smaller ones to kind of um, trick your eye. Flowers are not all the same size, so we're not gonna do them all the same size here. So when you're looking at your panel, the first flower we're gonna do is going to be the largest flower and it's going to be off-centered and it's going to be on the line of the vase and the greenery. So we're gonna take a little bit of the wicker white and I'm gonna squirt that out and I'm gonna use a little bit still of the thunder gray we're gonna layer this. The very last thing we're gonna do on these flowers is put some bright white on it with our finger. That's the fun part. But we're gonna, we're gonna start right here with the uh, thunder gray and a little bit of white. I'm not gonna clean my palette knife in the water. I'm just gonna kind of wipe it off on my palette paper, okay? I'm gonna take the white and mix a little bit of the thunder gray in there. Now this is gonna be tricky for a minute, so if you feel like you don't wanna go straight to your canvas and you wanna practice on the paper, you can, but uh, not difficult. You're going to hold the palette knife just like I did before, and you're gonna use your finger. It's flexible, and you're gonna use your finger, okay? Your finger is applying the pressure, and, um, and that's what's gonna help you make the motion of the flower. Okay, so flowers have a center that's dark, and we're gonna get to that in a minute. But we're gonna start right here, right on that line, and I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna push it down, and I'm gonna just do a curved motion, okay? Just a, a crescent motion. Now this is what I was talking about before, letting the palette knife do the um, work for you. This is where you want the outline of the flower, see this look that I just got right here? You want that. You want the palette knife to create the texture for you. When you get something that looks like that, stop. Do not overwork it. That is the worst thing you can do with, with this is just keep overworking it until you have a bunch of cotton balls that are the same, the same color. So you see how a little bit of the green has swirled around in there? All of this is gonna create texture in your painting and, it's, and we're gonna keep layering through this. So I'm super happy with the way that looks. I have not done anything to the center. If you get white in the center, that is fine. That is not a problem. But for all intents and purposes, this is what you want it to look like. You want to have a little bit of texture around the outside using the palette knife. Does everyone understand? 
All right, looks like y'all are doing awesome. How's everybody out there in Facebook land doing on their flowers? I hope good, good? not hard. Let us know. You should see all the people here. We've got Ohio, North Carolina, Ohio. San Diego, Tennessee, <laughs> Northern California, Florida, so New fun. York, Texas, Kentucky. Amazing. So fun. Absolutely so fun. fun. You've got uh, Kathleen joining us from Swanee, Georgia. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen. We love Swanee. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So that is my first bloom. Now I want to arrange my flowers outside of this. So if this is my first bloom, we're gonna go ahead and do all the blooms at the bottom of the vase. My, the next one to the left of it is gonna be a tad bit smaller and drop it down just a tiny bit lower than the one we just did. You don't want them all in a row. Um, if you've ever arranged flowers, you know that um, they're not perfect by any means. So same thing, you're, you're getting that texture in there and you're gonna do a second one and it's gonna be a tiny bit smaller, okay? Just a little bit smaller. I'm going around, I'm just taking my finger and I'm just going around and I'm creating the texture and I'm just going in a circle. The more texture you get, in my opinion, the better. So don't overwork it, do not overwork it. You can always go back and fluff it at the end is what I like to call, but right now, you're good. Okay. It's okay if the green swirls in there because flowers, you know, they'll get they'll get extra green in there. Oh. Okay. There we go. So I'm going back in now, and we've done this. I'm going to create a smaller, much smaller flower off to the side on the. I guess it's my right, maybe your left. I don't know. We're doing a much a much smaller one, and it's gonna be looking like it's falling out of the base right here, okay? So I've got three on the bottom, and this one is much smaller. This one is probably the size of just a, a large cotton ball. Um, these panels can come in different sizes. The one we're working on today is a 12 by 12 inch. It's a great size to sit on a shelf, or you can hang it on a gallery wall, or if you have a, spe uh, a special spot in your house, but um, it's a perfect size for this. Okay, this is where I was talking about, I don't know if you can see on here, but you're gonna have gaps, and this is why we did the green. You want to have that green behind there. So now we're gonna come in, we're gonna do another flower right above the two that we did here. Not quite as big, that we're gonna just skirt around. Creating that great texture. When I get something that looks like that with my palette knife, I'll let it, and you might want to just set it with a blow dryer or just uh, walk away from it for a minute and go, okay, I'm going to go to another flower. So, so far we should have about four blooms, and you can see where uh, doing larger blooms is, is creating a lot of interest and um, a much looser painting, okay? So after we do that one, I'm gonna move and I'm gonna do one that's gonna hang off the side a little bit here. And it's gonna be a little bit smaller than the one below it. And I want a half on, half off. Okay. Those are, they look great, y'all. They're doing a good job. All right. And you could keep growing it, but don't do any more than eight large blooms. Maybe on a canvas this size, we're gonna maybe do like six to seven. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna do another bloom on this size. I don't know if these are roses or peonies or what, but I like them. <laughs> Ranunculus. Okay, that's a that is a beautiful flower. Okay. You want to check back in and see how folks are doing here in the room with us? Let's see how everyone's paintings are coming they along. They look awesome. Wow. And by the way, just because I know people keep on asking, if you're falling a little bit behind or um, if you were late, you know, and missed the beginning of the, of the live stream, keep in mind, this video will live on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. That's Plaid Crafts. So you can check it out after the live stream is over and get, get all caught up. Um, you can, um, you know, pause it and go at your own pace, etc. So let's just see how folks are doing here in the room. 
Looking Look pretty good. good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that was awesome. Great. All right, I'm going to keep going. Um, when you, I'm going to do a smaller one up top. If you have, when you did your green underneath it all, if you have a harsh line, cover that up with a flower, okay? You don't want any really harsh lines when you get to the end. If you have a harsh line where we did our green um, underneath it, if there's a harsh a harsh line, go ahead and cover that up with a flower. We're going to do leaves over it, but I want to make sure that there's no really harsh line showing. So, so far I have five good sized blooms and two small ones. I'm looking at my composition here and I feel like I need one more up here. And I'm going to do one more kind of a small one up here. Again, getting all the texture we can. Super. And then I might just do one down low to make it look like you always have that flower that's just kind of falling out of the vase, if you're me arranging. And then um, I feel like that's good. And then you might look at it and see, do I have enough texture? Do I like what I've created? Do I want to go back in and make it not so perfect? Um, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to kind of come back in here, create a little bit more texture with it. I love using this palette knife. And you can see there is space in between my flowers. So the green that we laid down served its purpose. There's it got space, but it looks like it's a shadow. It looks like the vase is full. And that's what we wanted to do. Okay. How's everybody doing? Someone joining us from Scotland. Oh, Scotland. We love Scotland. Yes. And folks at home, if you are uh, making a painting, please be sure to share it with us on social. I want to see him. Yes, hashtag <laughs> Let's Paint and hashtag Plaid Crafts. Awesome. One more time, hashtag Let's Paint and hashtag Plaid Crafts so that we can see what you're making. I can't wait. Yeah. Awesome. All right. I think our next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of color. Um, I'm not sure if you can tell. Uh, by looking at the painting at home, but there is a little bit of succulent green and a little bit of pink in here and it's just to create and mix it in there with it. So I know that uh, when I'm teaching painting, sometimes that everyone says, what side of the flower should I do it on? This is not something you have to worry about. We're not worried about where the light's coming from at this point or making anything super realistic. We're just getting a little bit of color in there. So I would say this though, when you're doing it, don't do it all to the left or all to the right. Make sure that you are, um, if you do a little bit on one side, put a little bit on the other side. Don't make everything, um, I know when I first started painting, I would, I would paint and it would look like my painting was leaning or everything had the same exact stroke going in the same direction. This is a little more random and a little more free way of painting. So you're just gonna come in and you know do a little here, a little there. Okay, I like putting a little bit of that thunder gray in with the pink, it gives it just a little, um, added bit of warmth to it underneath that. So I'm not doing a tremendous amount of it. I feel like, like when I'm looking at that, I feel like that's good. I've got just a little bit here, a little bit there. 
I'm gonna repeat the same step with the succulent green. Um, I haven't put any on that. This, this color is super popular right now. I know succulents are popular, but I love this color green. It's got just a tiny bit of gray in it and it's super pretty. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of the thunder gray in that too. It's just gonna neutralize it a little bit for me. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not gonna go over the pink though. I'm gonna go beside it, to the other side of it. I don't wanna smear the pink and the succulent green together. I don't know that that would be the prettiest color. <laughs> Might not be, but a little bit of the succulent green is gonna go in there. I put a little bit of the thunder gray in there. You're gonna find um, uh, most of the, either used raw umber or thunder gray to kind of neutralize it and make my colors more earthier in this painting, okay? So a little bit more of that. And then at this point, we're gonna switch to, when you get done with that, we're gonna switch to um, working on the leaves because we want, this to dry we want this to set so if you're at home and you're working along with us and you have a blow dryer go ahead and dry it and let it set if not that's fine you can just go run along with us and we're going to go to our leaves next so work on your flowers a little bit get that color in there and then we'll go to our leaves and then we're going to finish up the centers and then do the finishing the finishing touches. Oh, Amy has joined us. Has Amy joined she us? She says Jill Alper is looking hot. Uh-huh, well, right. tell Amy. Everybody, everybody say hey to Amy. We miss you, Amy. Hi, Amy. Our, my partner in crime is on in on spring break, so I'm sure she's having a good, good time if she's watching us. <laughs> so funny. All right, how's everybody doing? Good, good. All right. Perfect. Getting good texture? Yep. You, Bonnie's got some good texture down there. Go get hers. Good texture. <laughs> All kinds of texture. <laughs> okay. Looking good. If anybody has any questions about yeah, what ask. we've done so far out there in Facebook land or here in the in the room, please just ask us and we will we can answer that. All right. Let us know how you're doing. I'm this doing. group is doing awesome. All right. I'm telling you, I'd take any one of them home. I love them. All right. We're going to go back to the clover green and you might even have some on your uh, palette still and there's a little bit of um, yellow in this painting and sunflower yellow is a, another one it's, it's like this cameo it's a beautiful it's a beautiful color yeah just yeah it's a really pretty color there, there now go. I feel like everyone can see it <laughs> super pretty okay so if you want a brighter green you can take a little bit of this yellow and you can feed it into your clover. The, to the clover and a little bit of yellow, okay? So it's gonna make just a, a more of a, just a yellow green, I guess. So I'm mixing that together. Now, leaves are not difficult, but you do need to get this um, stroke down. You know how when we did the bottom of it, we we scratch the surface like we just pulled our palette knife along the bottom. We're gonna do that for the leaves. Now don't worry if when you do this step, if you get green on your flower. We're gonna go back around and do another layer on top of the flower, so it's gonna be fine. But what we wanna do is we wanna take our palette knife again, just like that, and it's already got a, almost a point on it, and so we're gonna lay it down and we're just gonna scratch it and pull across. All you're going to get, and so it'll almost do the work for you by giving you some, some um, sharper lines. Now I'm going to go through, you do not have to fill every, every um, space that you have with this color, but you do want to kind of pull out some leaves. Am I making sense? Are you watching? All right, so kind of go in between where there's a little bit and just get a little dab of that green in there. Do not fill in that dark shadow completely. That would not be realistic. Now, I don't know that this painting is completely realistic, but you don't want to do that. 
So you want to get a little bit of that lighter green in there and you can kind of pull up behind some of the flowers there. All right, and really that is about all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna get going too crazy with it. And then we're gonna pull some darker green in there in a minute as well. But while we have this color green, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pounce a little bit of it in the center of these flowers that we made. So the center of the flowers are pretty dark green um, for right now, but I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna pounce, just make a little dot and I'm using just the tip of that going into my, and I'm just pouncing in the center of these flowers, okay? Everyone see that? So you're just creating texture, and you're, we're making it look like, I don't, what's that part of the flower called, the, the stamen, is that correct? I don't know, I, I did well in botany or whatever that was, <laughs> but, okay. So we're just going in the center, of them. We're gonna bring more color in there, so if you feel like it's looking a little bit flat, that's okay. We're gonna put more, more color in there. All right. This looks so good. All right, and then we're gonna take a little bit of just the straight clover green, and I'm not gonna go over every bit of what I just did, but I'm gonna create a little bit of a low light in there get a little bit of that dark in there taking a little bit of the clover green and just going back over what I did and getting a little bit another layer of um, depth in there and I'm just doing some little short strokes okay I'm talking about over the leaves See how I'm just coming back in over the over the leaves and putting a little bit of color in there, the darker green, and then do a little bit in the center as well, but less than you did of the other. You don't want to cover up everything you just did. You want to make sure that you have layers in there and that they're all a different color. I think that makes sense. Does that make sense? Okay. So a little so someone bit. Someone was asking if they can get the same effect with a brush. So it they, is they, very hard. You. You can get a similar effect with a very dry brush. It's hard to get um, this look with the palette life pulls with a brush if your brush is really saturated. So if you take your brush and you take off most of the paint and you use a really dry brush, you can get a similar effect for sure. Um, definitely. It'd be a little bit tighter painting, but that's okay. All right. So there we have that. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of the wicker white and mix it in with that green, and I'm gonna go one more round on these leaves and just get a tiny bit of light on there, just so they pop, okay? How you doing, Lee Sullivan? I haven't heard you. <laughs> <laughs> little bit of that and then I'm gonna do a tiny bit of that white inside of these flowers then we might we might have to pick our uh, panel board up and air dry it <laughs> or start blowing on it because <laughs> we're gonna need to do our last little step all right How's everybody doing? Good? I think I'm a descendant of Monet. I think you are, for sure. <laughs> Let me see that. Hold, hold that right. up, Monet. Oh, yes. Wow. Beautiful. 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 <laughs> I, brought, I brought in some ringers. <laughs> I said I brought in some ringers. <laughs> All right. So... How's everybody feeling? Everyone's still working on them? Don't overwork them. If you, got, if you get it and you're like, okay, I've got the feeling, I, this, is, this is looking good, I'm liking it, we're gonna stop. All right, so our next thing that we're gonna do is take the tiniest bit, we're gonna go back into a little bit of this umber and 
again. You like my palette paper? I'm doing good here, aren't I? I'm using every inch of it. I'm gonna go back into the umber. I'm gonna take the point of my uh, palette knife again, and I'm gonna pull just the tiniest bit in over these flowers before we do our last step on them. So you wanna get just a, that might be a lot, but I'm gonna get a little bit of the umber in here and see how I'm just scratching around them? Just a little bit here, a little bit there. Not too much. You don't want to get crazy with it. Okay? So umber only, no mixture of anything. Yep, just straight umber. And we're going to go straight. And that's a gracious plenty. We can do a little bit on our leaves up here if we need to do a little bit. And it's just creating, um, when you put something dark on it, it's going to create uh, and make your eye pop. Not your eye pop, your painting pop. Your <laughs> eyes, look at it. Your eyes will not pop, but your painting will. That's a good thing. Okay. I'm gonna uh, clean my palette knife off, not with water, but I'm going to just wipe it on the table or the palette paper. And then I'm gonna let it sit. And we're gonna go to our finger next. Oh. You're gonna need, everyone, I have, I have plenty of, uh, wet wipes and things. But we're gonna go into the straight wicker white now. And I'm gonna squirt a little bit more clean white. If your white has uh, been uh, well used, put some clean white on your, on your palette. Now, if your flowers are still super wet, you're going to use a very light touch. I like to use my finger you can use a paintbrush to answer your question. You can absolutely use a paintbrush, but I like to use my finger because it lets me um, get a lot of really good texture, and that's what we want to do on this final um, stroke on our flower. So I'm going to go into, uh, and you're going to ask which finger to use. I don't know, whichever one you like to use, but I'm going to use my right index finger, <laughs> and I'm going to go in a circular motion, and I'm going to pull around making what feels like petals, okay? And the texture is what is gonna happen here. See that? You don't wanna smear all that brown that you just put on there, you wanna leave that, but as you travel around the um, center of your flower, you just wanna do short little strokes with your finger, creating that texture, okay? Don't go all the way to the outside and ruin all of this great texture you got with your palette knife, you want that creeping out from underneath this step. So when you've created all this great stuff with your, um, with your palette knife, don't, don't go over it. Use your finger, come up close to it, but you wanna have this. This is what you really wanna have, okay? And so if you've gotten green, I don't know if that was proper English, but if you've got green on your flower, um, this is a good time to kind of go over it and tighten up your flower a little bit. So if you have any weird stroke that you're not let in, or if your eyes just catching it a weird way, you can go over it. Now, you can turn your flowers too with this. So all the flowers right now look like they're, they're coming straight at me, but you can use this stroke and go around the center of your flower and see what I'm doing right now, you can make that flower actually look like it's turned a different direction by making it fatter on one end than the other. So this one actually looks like it's turning that direction. Um, you can do that with all of them. You can turn them whichever way you want, but continue using your finger to get that going. I'm gonna turn this one up top a little bit more in a different direction. Don't have them all looking like they're going in the same direction. You wanna have them um, turning in the vase. You don't want all your centers to all be cocked to the right or to the left. You want them to go kind of every which way. All right, if your white is getting dirty, uh, get a little bit more clean. And we are getting in the home stretch here. We're just checking in with the folks in our studio here and see how they're doing on their paintings. Great. Let us know out there if you're watching the live stream how your painting is coming along. We'd like to 
Love to see it. Love to see your comments. Absolutely. These look cool. That was awesome, y'all. You're doing great. So good. So, so good. They look great, y'all. All right. Isn't that fun? I like to finger paint. <laughs> We're getting into the home it. stretch here. We aren't are we? getting into the home stretch. All right. For sure, for sure, for sure. See all this great texture you get with, with using your finger? And like I said, you can use a brush, but you'd have to get a, a lot of paint on your brush to do that. And you would use a round brush for that. All right. Our, one of our very last steps we're gonna do is, I'm gonna turn my canvas, uh, or my panel a little bit, and I'm gonna just take a little bit of white, again on my palette knife, and I'm gonna take a, a, it off, uh, a good bit of it off, and then I'm gonna create um, a highlight on my vase. So it's one of those things, light is gonna hit your vase, um, so you want it to look like there's a little bit of a highlight on it. So I'm just gonna drag a little bit of white over it. And then as you look at it, after you do the highlight on your vase, you look at it and you might wanna um, add a little something to your background if you're looking at your colors and you think, oh, I really like how this uh, blush pink looked in here, or I really like this sunflower yellow. The, this is when I come in and I'll take a little bit and I'll put the tiniest bit of that pink if I put it one spot on the canvas, I put it somewhere else, okay? So you put a little bit of that pink in there, or I might be really liking that green, so I might pull a little bit more green on the side. Um, you might wanna put a little bit more blue or teal, however you wanna do it. And then sometimes I'll think, oh, I got really carried away with that background, I wish I had been a little more subtle with it. Let your painting dry really good, and then you can go back over some of the spots um, and tone it down a little bit with some of the thunder gray or a little bit of white mixed in with it if you wanna mellow it out a little bit. Um, but you don't have to. And then I like to take at the very end when I'm doing uh, something with a palette knife, just like we grounded our flowers with a little bit of brown, um, Y'all watch this step. So you'll take this and I'll kind of take a little bit of brown on the edge of my palette knife and I'll sneak it around the sides of my board to kind of ground the painting a little bit. And so I know at the very beginning we talked about what color um, we wanted our sides to be and this is when you would decide like I'm looking at it thinking oh I really enjoyed that blush pink maybe I want it to be pink or maybe I want it to be darker so if you wanted it darker you could use the uh, raw umber uh, raw umber is also really great if you water it down you can definitely use it as a stain on this if you water it down a little bit and just brush it on you can use the brush and it looks like a stain because it'll show the wood grain on it um, that is going to really super be personal preference. Um, again, too, I was talking about uh, on, the, on the painting that, um, the example, I wrote a little sentiment on there. You can do that here. There's a perfect space to write something if you wanted to write it or if you wanted to stamp a little, um, if you wanted to stamp a little something or if you wanted to stencil a little something, it would, it's always cute to add sentiment to a painting. Now, we can't do this in our class tonight, but I wanna encourage everyone here, our paintings are still very wet. But one of the really great things about using a um, wood panel is the fact that it's wood and you can sand wood. So, uh, and acrylic paints are really good to be sanded too. And here at the studio, we sand a lot of stuff. I say it's very forgiving. It knocks down any harsh lines or any shaky lines or, you know, it can kind of, work a miracle where you're thinking oh this didn't turn out just like I wanted it to but you sand it and it's just a great look and so I feel like when this dries we can take uh, plaid has these really great sanding blocks we use them here in the studio for everything so after this dries completely I'm just gonna take this sanding block and I'm just gonna sand um, first in one direction and then in the other, and it's gonna knock down some of the harshness. So if like my color here is a little too bold, it's gonna show the wood grain, and that is an awesome look. 
And um, I highly recommend that you try the sanding if you've never done that before. And sometimes you can sand on canvas too and it looks really cool. Um, another thing that I like to do is Plaid has some really great sealers. A high gloss sealer can look really great on this painting, especially with the wood. It just makes it pop and it just gives it a little bit more of a contemporary look. Um, try just try it if you never tried it the high gloss sealer can look really cool it's almost like a resin look and it just it looks like a million bucks so um y'all i think we have made our paintings i'm very very impressed and we are just so thankful and yeah. glad to get to do this and like we said it's been just about an hour and pretty much everybody's got a completed painting so They're that's beautiful. absolutely great so Oh yeah, let's see. Let's see how it looks. Voila. <laughs> All right, so now if you did have fun tonight, I want to encourage you to join us for next month's Let's Paint Live, where we are going to be doing May Wildflowers. Here's the painting. Um, on our Facebook page, you can RSVP to the event, and you're gonna have the complete supply list so if you weren't able to get your supplies in time for the live stream this time, be sure to go to platonline.com and get all of your supplies for May Wildflowers and you can join us live next month. We're going to be using Martha Stewart craft paint for this particular painting. Is Martha going to be demonstrating? <laughs> Martha herself might be tied up. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> it's going to be, uh, it's, it's, it's actually beautiful. going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, this is a really great painting. Um, and so before we sign off, I mentioned earlier that this Let's Paint Live is part of our broader Let's Paint program. And um, just hang tight with us after the broadcast because we are going to give you a little sneak peek of our Let's Paint program. Okay? Thanks everybody for joining us and Thank have a you great so night. Much. We appreciate it. Hi, I'm Andy Jones, content editor for Plaid's new online education program, Let's Paint. We're going to bring you a broad range of content from snackable short videos to monthly studio lessons where we'll create a complete painting or dive deep into a specific technique. We'll also have guest artists in the studio, including Donna Dewberry, creator of the One Stroke Painting Technique. Join us for our Let's Paint program. And don't forget, join us for Facebook Live Paint Nights. Come on, let's paint.